Affinity Photo does not have a select subject as seen in programs like Photoshop or Pixelmator. However, if you have a Mac, here is a quick workaround for you. The newer version of macOS have a built-in select object similar to iOS. When we open up this kitten image in preview, by pasting it from the clipboard, under the tools menu we have the option to remove the background. Before applying, it shows a glowing outline around the subject which is pretty slick. When we apply it, preview will keep the subject and remove the background. We can now copy this to the clipboard and switch back to Affinity Photo. In Affinity Photo, I can now paste it which creates a new layer with the subject only. This is a quick way to select a subject. Here are a couple of tricks to make this work better for you. First of all, this is not a mask, so I like to convert this to a mask, but before doing that, let's have a quick look at the alpha channel. The remove background function in preview usually doesn't create sharp edges, and the border is mostly grey for better blending. To fix that, we can add a levels adjustment and select alpha. By lowering the white level, we get rid of this grey border area. I can now command click in the layers panel to make a selection. With the selection active, I can go to the original image after hiding the pasted image and apply a mask. Awesome! Now our image is masked and we can fine tune the mask as needed. For example, when we zoom in you can see that the mask is a bit edgy. A way of fixing that is by making sure the mask is selected and then apply a Gaussian blur to the mask. This gives a much softer transition and for this image a value of 0.4 works quite well. Because it is a mask we can also use the brush tool with black or white to fix the mask issues. Another cool trick of preview is that it can recognize text. Let's open up this image in preview. I can now select the text as it was a text document. Pretty awesome. You can copy the selected text to the clipboard but I can also drag and drop it to Affinity Photo. The text is added in a frame. This is because my last used text tool was the frame text. If I change that to artistic text and repeat the same steps, the drop text will now be added as an artistic text. The remove background in preview can also be useful for clip art images. Let's apply it to this image and it did a pretty decent job. A quick copy followed by a paste in Affinity and we have our clip art in our document. Pretty awesome. There is however a small catch when using preview to remove a background. Let's go back to the original document and copy the image layer from Affinity Photo to the clipboard. I will now create a new document in preview from the clipboard which will be a copy of the image in Affinity and this is where things fall in pieces. If I open up the tools menu, notice how the remove background is not enabled. The reason for this is that the pasted document is not pasted as an image but as a PDF document. We can clearly see this when we open up the info panel in preview. Sadly, the remove background function only works on images and not PDF files. The reason why the image is transferred as a PDF is because Affinity puts the image in multiple formats into the clipboard. One as a bitmap and one as a PDF. Preview prefers the PDF version and opens up the clipboard as a PDF document. So my advice would be to get an image into Preview first and then paste it to Affinity. Another option would be to export the image from Affinity and then open the exported image in Preview. But this is definitely not ideal. An alternative method would be to use an intermediate program like PowerPoint or any other image editor and paste the image first there and then copy again from that program to the clipboard. For example, I'm using a free bitmap editor called Seashore where I can create an image from the clipboard and then copy the image from Seashore to the clipboard. If I switch to preview now and create a document from the clipboard, the image is being passed as a bitmap image and the remove background tool is available again. It's not ideal, but it works. The question is, is it worth going through these steps? Sometimes it can be faster to select the subject in Affinity itself.
I have not tested this on iOS, but probably it should also work on iOS. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and learned something new today. Thank you for watching and until the next video.